All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ, all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear, and please let me know if you have any difficulty. However, if you don't hear me very well, it's very possible that Shaitan he did urinate in your ears, because this is what the Prophet he said. And really, I know that the Prophet he knew everything, and based on that, we have to check it out. So if you have any problem with hearing, please check your ears, because Shaitan is very, very bad boy. And he will find that your ears, which is makes sense, your ears look like a toilet seat. <laughs> so he will piss there. <clears throat> now, today our topic is about hell in Islam. But we will talk about specific thing. You know, Muhammad always, he come to us with a new story. Muhammad is dead long time ago, but still his stories are endless. This guy, he cannot stop talking. like, And the more he talk, the more he do poo-poo. And this is what is funny about the fool one. The foolish people, they speak too much, and by speaking, they make poo, poo So Muhammad, he knew everything. Muhammad, he knew the heaven. Muhammad, he knew the hell. Muhammad, he knew how the mountains is made. Muhammad knew how the sea happened. Muhammad, he knew what, uh, the, the fresh water don't mix with the salty water because Allah, he between, between them uh, a dry land, which is very stupid because the, the fresh water is coming from the salty water. It's not, they are mixing. So Muhammad, you know, scientist Muhammad is the sunset and Mercota, the sperm coming from the backbone, and my backbone is hurting me. And uh, the women have a sperm coming from their ribs, but forget about all of this. Today, our topic is about, uh, by the way, this is my cousin. <clears throat> yeah. So, what Muhammad he said about hellfire, and what this have to do with the title, the hell of Allah and the Karabah of the Philippines. Let us see how this is work. Give me a second. <clears throat> Muhammad. Muhammad when he talk. Muhammad he is talking. Everybody have to learn. This is the prophet of Allah. He knew everything. The best of mankind. The genius. In front of us, this is a carabao from the Philippines. I don't know if how many of you knows. It's like it's like a cow, you know. It's a cow, but uh, it's a huge. It's very powerful, and uh, you might notice they put something in their nose. They put a they put like a ring in their nose, so they can control them easy, because this is a very painful location. This is a, this is a very powerful animal, and it's very uh, you know if he if he goes stubborn, he can even kill you. So what they do, they put a rope in their nose. So if he goes stubborn, they pull that rope and then he have to, sub to be subdued because of the pain. So Muhammad, he is describing his heaven in a very similar way. But how? Let us go to the hadith and see how. This is Muhammad speaking, describing his hell. And this is Sahih Hadith, so the Muslim cannot say. Read with me carefully, please. <clears throat> the Prophet of Allah, the Messenger of Allah said, Hell would be brought on the day, the day of judgment, with 70,000 bridles. I don't know what the word bridles mean. Let me see, just to be sure that the, the translation is accurate. This is... I'm not sure what this word means in English. Give me a second. Actually, this is not really uh, uh, not accurate because the the bridle, is, as you see, is something you yes, it's a it's a something you put ar around an animal to control him. But uh, zimam, like you know, if I if I search right now, just to show you how they they always they try to give you a different. If I search the word zimam, zimam, click here. And I will do in front of you Google search. Search Google. What we will find in Google search? We will go and click at images. <clears throat> you will see women having a ring in their nose. You see that thing in the nose? Yeah. So the zimam have many meanings, but all of them they are attached to the nose. Like somebody, he have a imam. Somebody he's proud about his his like his honor. So he, uh, you know, he left his nose up. 
So the demand for the animals when you drag somebody is putting something in his nose and dragging him from that place. Now going back to the hadith. When Muhammad he mentioned this story as we see in the front of us and this is a Sahih story that the hellfire in the judgment day is going to be dragged by 70,000 ring in, their no in the nose of the heaven or in the holes of the heaven and 70,000 angels will be dragging each ring okay so what is hell what what is hell exactly in islam is that a cow what muhammad mean that hell is going to be dragged by 70,000 bridle as they say here in the translation and the one who will drag it is 70,000 angel i mean what is that You see, when somebody he mentions something to us, we need to ask ask ourselves. Zimam lijam, yes, but the lijam, the lijam, you know, this is used to be for in the in the nose. This is why if you type the word zimam right now in Google, you will find it says something they put in the in the it's an earring, they put it in the nose. So how we are going to drag hell? And why Muhammad is stuck with 70? 70 uh, Huri, 70 thousand angels, 70. Okay, so what will happen if there are uh, 69,999? 70,000 and hell have 70,000 brittle, and the 70,000 angel will drag it. Drag it from where to where? We are dragging this thing from where to where? Anyone, any, any Muslim knows? What is this? And where Muhammad he got this information from? Why we cannot find it in the Quran? So we can laugh more. And look like according to Islam, uh, hell and heaven they are a piece of something, you know, and they are dragging them from place to place. I mean, what if you leave it in their place? I mean, whatever, whatever the hell is now. So what Muhammad is saying to us that hell now is located in somewhere, but in the day of judgment is going to be brought. This is very funny. What brought where? And why you need to bring it anywhere? I mean, just dump the people there supposedly, and that's it. So Muhammad here, when he make those stories, I believe uh, uh, he is trying to uh, amuse or let us say to make himself like he's a person who knows everything and those naive people around him they are like wow man 70,000 angels dragging hell dragging oh okay and then when somebody asks Muhammad about how hot the hell is and why we have hot uh, summer and we have why we have hot uh, winter Muhammad he have answers for anything I mean uh, do you, are, you, are you kidding me Muhammad, if we if we give Muhammad now the weather business, right? Yeah, I know he copied the number seven from the Bible, right? Jesus even he mentioned that there were the seventy. So everything Muhammad he says he he's he's copying somebody. Uh, when they ask Muhammad about why the summer is so hot and why the the winter is cold, how does this change happen? I mean, we are in the same location. Why? few months ago it was very hot a few months after it's cold Muhammad he have an answer and the answer is very scientific this is Muhammad a prophet Muhammad sorry you're gonna say Muhammad the Muslims be offended okay I will not say I will say the prophet the idiot Muhammad saying the following Allah messenger said the hell fire complained to its Lord saying oh my Lord Oh my, oh my Allah, my different parts eat up each other. What? The different part of the hell eating up each other? Okay. So he allowed it to take a breathe. <sighs> one in the winter and one in the summer. Look at this. And this is the reason for severe heat and the better cold you find in the weather. Do you see the reason? I mean, who, who here dare to disagree that this is scientifically true? 
Nobody. I mean, we have to be honest. We cannot say this is not true. This is scientifically very accurate. And yes, you know, the hellfire is uh, eating each other. And she needed to breathe. And you know, look, the hellfire is talking. This hellfire look like it's a creature. And this creature talk and complain. Huh? Do we have any Muslim here have a comment? Do we have any, any Muhammadan? He have a comment about what we are saying? If you are a Muhammadan and you have something to say, please feel free. We would like to hear you. All right? Now, uh, <clears throat> I wanted to know why it's getting cold in winter and why it's getting hot in the summer. But I wonder and I ask myself, is that the imagination of Muhammad is so wild to the point he think about it in such a way? Or he is copying a story of somebody? I assure you he is copying stories. This guy is just a fraud. In the old days, people, they have tons of reasoning, their own reasoning. They cannot explain things, what's happening. So there is stories, and those stories are all over around Muhammad. And this is why if you go in the Quran, you will see the Arab at that time of Muhammad, they are not so stupid. They say to Muhammad, this is nothing but the fairy tales of the, the, the ancient. Asatiru al-awwaleen. Asatir al-awwaleen. Look how many times the Arab, they say to Muhammad, this is nothing, nothing but fairy tales. You see, the Muslims, they bring uh, some uh, a Christian to a church and they say when the, when the Prophet recite the Quran, people, they go crazy. This is why they convert to Islam. You are right. People, they were laughing at him. They, they were laughing at him. In the time of Muhammad, the Arab, they were laughing at the Quran as a language, as a story, as a meaning. And in the top of that, they say to him, this is nothing but fabulous of the, of the men of old. And if we want to make something like this, we can come with a better. So what, what is this? It was them to say, they say to you that the, 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 the Quran, that challenged the Arab to make something like this. Uh, here we go in front of you. Now, if a Muslim, he don't agree that this is a fairy tales of the ancient, please explain to us. Do you agree really with Muhammad that the, the, the summer and the winter is happening because the, the, the hell complained to Allah? Any Muslim have an, uh, any Muhammadan here? If there is any Muhammadan would like to talk to me, feel free. My Skype is open. I would ha be happy to take your call. All right. What is this? In different hadith, Muhammad, he go far in his uh, madness. The hellfire is like a box. And Allah, he will keep throwing people inside and the, the hellfire talk to Allah and says I want more can you give me more I want more like hello uh, and Allah he give her more I want more and Allah give her more and then the hellfire you know when uh, 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 like because we keep we keep asking for more so Allah is out of them. That's it. What he would do? So Allah, he put his foot in the hellfire and the hellfire will be suffering from the, like, because Allah have, uh, foot is heavy. Uh, uh, God, God, stop, stop. Stop. I mean, who in the world want to believe in such a madness? And by the way, why Allah, he have a foot?
Does any Muhammadan have an answer? Why Allah, he has a foot? You see, the Muslim, they say to us, Allah is not a man. Allah, blah, blah, blah. Allah, okay. Allah is an octopus, maybe. And what about the other foot? You have one foot? So if you go in details in the in the in the, the about the God of Islam, you will see the God of Islam is the most funny creature ever. He have two eyes, he have two hands in the right side, he have a foot. By the way, they never mentioned that he have two feet. Always speak about one foot, all right? One shin. We do not know what happened to the other shin. Maybe he lost it in the war. So uh, the God of Islam is a very funny creature. He have two eyes, two hands. He have a he have a face. Uh, he have a bum. He have a foot. He have a shin. And now the hellfire is talking to Allah, and Allah He have to stop the hellfire from asking for more. So what He do? This is how you silence hellfire. You put your your foot in the fire, and this is from this we learn something very important. Anyone notice what we learn from this hadith? That Allah shoes is fireproof. Correct. Otherwise, you explain to me how Allah He put His foot in the hell fire and it's not burning. Hello. So there is one of two solution. Either Allah foot maybe is made from concrete. Allah He have no feeling. Like His body is dead. Allah made it because even if it's a steel, it's going to melt. I mean, what is this? Allah, he put his uh, foot in the hellfire. So the more we read about this cult, the more we laugh. But before I continue, uh, somebody sent to me a message saying somebody sending around uh, uh, saying donate to Christian Prince to pay PayPal. I don't have PayPal and this guy is a fraud. So anyone who do that, report him to PayPal automatically right away, you know, and let him get arrested, whoever he is. So be careful. The only place I have where people they can uh, donate is Patreon. And this is the only one. I don't have any beside Patreon, any other account. So be careful. I don't have PayPal. There's a lot of uh, scammers, a lot of uh, fraud people around you. Don't make them fool you, my friend. All right. Uh, yesterday we made a video about it because uh, uh, I don't want somebody to be used and fooled by such a person. And if you gave him a, a penny, even if it's a penny, report into PayPal and then the, the authority, they will go after him and they will lock his account. They will charge him with a fraud. He will spend a good time in jail, even if he's overseas. You know? So be careful. Now, we go back to our topic. Do we have any Muslim would like to explain to us what's happening? And what this is all is about. If we ask the Muslims about Allah foot, who is a Muslim can tell us what Allah foot is? What does that mean? You know, when we say somebody have a foot, it's mean he walk. Okay, Jesus is God for the Christian. He have feet. Why? Because he came as a man. And he walked. Perfect. Allah, he have feet for what? Any Muslim knows? Uh, don't uh, post for me your ID to add you. If you want to call me, if you are a Muslim, only Muslim, you can call me. Debate TV, find me, you know, and call me. Don't post, I'm not going to add anyone. You you call, you do your job. And we would like to see somebody claim to be a scholar because all what we see a bunch of kids around us. I wonder how, I wonder why. Each time I turn my head, like I, I see what up and down, I see a bunch of kids around me. I mean, where is the Muslim scholars? If you go in the internet, you find what? Mimi Hijab, who don't even have high school in Islam. Lili Dawa, who don't even have a driving license, uh, Nunu Ahmad. I mean, look at them, some say, those are the ones who want to teach us Islam, and none of them know anything about Islam. Where is the scholars? Or Shabir Ali, who do not know how to read the name of his God correctly. 
Where is the Muslim scholars? The only scholar I ever met, wonderful scholar actually, his name is Dr. Zakir Naik. They asked Zakir Naik, why a Muslim woman, she, there's no women in Islam, she's a prophet. And this is a video in, in the internet, you can go and watch it. I'm just quoting him. So uh, he said, smart, very smart, super smart. He said, brother and sister, did the asking question? Our sister, the asking question. Why in Islam there is no women to the Prophet? And I have to agree. In Islam, we don't have a woman to the Prophet. And there is a reason for this. Very logical reason. If a woman to become a Prophet, they have to leave the congregation. In the prayer and the dude. And if she do that, she have to do to do and we do. And if she do to do, that will disturb the believers. Translation. The reason a woman in Islam she can't be a prophet. If she became a prophet, she had to lead the prayer. If she had, if she lead the prayer, she will bend over. And if she bend over, everybody will look at her bum. I mean, if this is your scholar, how bum are you? So the reason a woman she cannot be a prophet because of her ass. May Allah ask you. That is the reason. If this is your scholar, who, what about your dummies? Huh? <laughs> if those are your scholars, what about your dummies? Any Muhammadan? And actually, uh, hold on. You see, the Muslims, they have reputation. They get tempted by any ass, even ass of, of, of men. Let me show you. Uh, in the time of the Caliphate, a bunch of Muslims, they came to the Caliphate complaining about a gay imam. And they said to him, we have a, a, a leader of prayer who is tempting us by his bum. Look at this. I went to Uthman ibn Affan while he was besigned, which he became the, the, the caliphate, you know. You are the chief of the Muslims in general, and you see that you, you, uh, what has fallen to you. We are led, the salat, the prayer, by a leader of al-fitna, temptation, Look, the most, this is the Muslim translation. Trials and afflictions. What? Okay, how he make a trials and affliction for the Muslims? Look at this. And we are afraid to be sinful in following him. Uthman, he said, do salat. It's the best thing you do, okay? Just do salat, man. And then the man, he, like, he did not get what he want. So he said, okay, well, it looked like uh, we have no choice Read carefully, as Zohri said, in our opinion, one should not offer salat behind a feminine person unless there is no alternative. Do you see it? A, fe a, a, a feminine, the Al Muhannath, Muhammad, he claimed, and we can show many hadith about the, uh, the, the Al Muhannath is somebody he is a homo. And he is supposedly the son from adultery or somebody he did not say the name of Allah before sex. So these Muslims, look how good they are. Supposedly the guy who is the gay is the bad person for them, as, as they are saying. But the fact they are the bad one. Because look, they are saying, that, but because he is a gay, they are tempted. That's mean all of you are gays. You know what I mean? How you can be tempted by a guy he is praying in front of you? How that can be temptation to you? How this is can make affliction and trials to you? A guy he is effeminate, are you, you describe him, praying in front of you, reading the prayer, he is bending over. How you are getting tempted? You tell me. Unless you are a gay yourself. Crazy cult.
Oh boy. We go back to our topic. Until now, we did not see any Muslim here have anything to say about dragging the hellfire by 70,000 angels and we drag the hellfire from the holes of the hell, like their nose. What do you say? Any Muhammadan? Any Muhammad want to say anything? And don't make a comment against somebody because he is a gay. I mean, this is, you see, you see, a, a gay, a gay who is not killing people is 1,000 million times better than, than Muhammad. He is not doing anything to anyone. As long as he do his business in his bedroom, this is his business. Muhammad is a very bad person. You, you know, if, if, uh, if this is the problem of Muhammad, that will be easy. Because he will be doing his business in his bedroom. And what, what, you, what you do in your business room, in your, in, your, in, your, in your room, this is your business. For me, sin is sin, bad is bad, and I cannot say it's good. But Muhammad is a very ugly person. Any Muhammad have an answer for this? For anything we said. Anyone? The Muhammadan are upset because they cannot flag my account. Uh, I mean, to to uh, to disturb my broadcast. We were doing this for the last ten days. Each time I go live on air. They like, you know, uh, we were not able to, to fix this issue. Uh, but yesterday we got a new equipment and we knew we have a new setting and things is over. It's history. They cannot do that anymore. Any Muhammad want to say anything? By the way, uh, in the coming uh, year from the like a, in the last few days of the year, I will go far away and I will be doing fishing. All right, I want to escape the winter here uh, for some time and I will be doing fishing and I will uh, uh, make videos for you guys uh, uh, Christian Prince fishing and look I will throw the hooks in the water and I will say any Muhammadan hmm? do you like me to post videos about fishing who like fishing here I can't tell you where I'm going you know it's just a, a, a trip I wish I can take you all of you with me, which was going to be very horrible. Imagine having the beach with a bunch of 500 people in the beach or 600. That would be scary. Yeah. You like fishing? Yeah, I, I will go fishing, actually. Yeah, but uh, because here it's I'm, I'm sick of this cold, man. I mean, you cannot imagine how cold it is. Very, very, very cold. Yeah. All right, all right. I will pause videos for you when I go and do fishing. I will be doing some work too, but you know, I, uh, but I will take a break from the work and do fishing. Sound fishy, isn't it? <clears throat> you love fish? What I catch? Okay, let me tell you. This is a true story, by the way. Once upon the time, I was fishing between the seven seas, and one while I was there, I saw an island. I stopped in that island, and this island was so so small, only like a million kilometer big, only like a million, two million. I think I forgot, like two, maybe two million, very small. And then I start walking in this island, and this island is full of coconut trees, the same one you see in Alaska, you know. Uh, and this island, by the way, it's very warm. Uh, they call it the Arctica. Arctica, you know very warm anyway so when i was there i found a fountain and i mean in the middle of nowhere i saw this fountain it's a very beautiful fountain okay i want to drink from it but it, it was not really water it was oil <laughs> and this is how we discovered the oil we are the arab we are the first one discovered the oil you know by the way 
okay but we did not report at that time because we like we don't want to destroy destroy the earth with the with the and do cause a cause a global warming and you know your stuff anyway so i keep walking and then i found the second war uh, 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 fountain the second fountain i wanted to drink from it but i could not why because it was a, a gasoline true story anyway so i keep walking and then i found the third fountain the third fountain i was really thirsty and i drank from it and then i became one day old i wanted to talk i started saying why 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 i didn't know what happened i mean suddenly i became so young and that was the fountain of youth now do you know that muhammad he spoke about the fountain of youth do you know that i mean if i say this story for muslims they will laugh at me right but if muhammad he say the same story muslim they say we believe it's a true story because the one who come with this is Muhammad. If we go here, let us see. What a crazy man. All right. Let us see where is the story. Here we go. Here he is talking about a prophet. His name is Al Khudr, and how Allah He taught him to take a whale with him, not a fish. In the translation, they say it's a fish. And Allah He said to him, "Whenever this fish lost, follow it. But the fish is dead. How the fish will, uh, will lost?" brother what happened brother when they arrived to the fountain some of the drops of the water fall in the fish and the fish come back to life because this is a, it's called ma'ul hayat you see in arabic it says al hayat which means the, the water of life so if you are a person who is dead you drink from it they put some water in your nose or your mouth you are you are alive actually you don't need to drink it if the water touch you you became alive again so it says it says here read carefully this is not my words hello muslims they will say liar and none come in touch with its water but become alive do you see it and by the way i'm very 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 old because i have a bottle of the water of life each time i die i told them in my in the, in the like in the one like nine uh, they call 911 we have a dead body here they come to my home and I have like a paper in my chest says, please uh, throw some drop of water from this ball in me. They throw it on me. I come back to life like what? Like bala, like the 911. Like what happened? You know, I, I did not tell him the secret, by the way. Yeah. You know, I did not tell him this is the water you uh, throw at me. But anyway, this is a true story, by the way. This is a true story. I mean, look at this Muhammad. He have a lot of true stories. Who can deny this? You watch the, the 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 movie the the what it's called, uh, the Pirate of the Caribbean. The the Pirate of the Caribbean has, has less fiction than Muhammad. A guy, his name is Moshe. He have a servant. Allah, he sent him to to join a classroom for a prophet. His name is the Green. Why his name is Green? Who remember? Why Mister Green? His name is Green. Anyone remember? Guys, why we have only 565? Honest to Allah, if we are talking about lipstick, we will have more. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. You know, I'm blessed. The Lord, he have a 12. Listen, why he was called Mr. Green? Because Mr. Green, he drank from that water. And because of that, if he sit in the grass and the grass is dead, the grass will turn a green. So they call him a green. True story. And Mr. Green, Al Khadr, he was alive in the time of Adam. He attended the funeral of Noah. And then he attended the funeral of Moses. And then he attended the funeral of Muhammad. And he will be with us when Jesus comes. Why? Because he's drinking from the fountain of youth. I mean, this guy, he will never die. He got the fountain. 
Then Muhammad want to say to me, I'm lying. Who want to say I'm lying? And this is Al-Bukhari. What, you will say this is weak? And by the way, the story is in the Quran too. And brother, look what happened. When this water touched the fish, the fish came back to life. So it moved and it slipped out of the basket. Mean and enter the sea. Oof, 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 oof. I mean, this fountain, it must be at the edge of the sea. I mean, okay, there's a, there's a spring of water. And how how she jump in the sea? There's a fountain there. I mean, how far does she? 500 meters? So the, 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 the fish, she walk like walking down the street. La, 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 la. I am the fish. I mean, what is this? So the fish came back to life because she was in touch with the water, which is true. This has happened to us always, you know, like I know many people, they die and we get uh, the, the, from the fountain of youth and they right away. Actually, if you look at those artists in TV, you know, uh, obviously they are using the, the uh, you know, like uh, Madonna, this is a crazy woman. Huh? I used to watch her when I was a kid and now still young, uh, what she is doing. She is drinking from the fountain of silicon. Hello? It's proven to be scientifically correct, brother. There's a fountain. It's called the fountain of silicon. This is a similar fountain to the fountain of youth, but the difference between them is silicon and they, you will not live forever. The silicon fountain will make your belly bomb uh, uh, from stretching go up to your nose. That's not the difference, brother. Any Muslim? Hmm? Good morning from east of Malaysia, my friend. Good morning. Uh, Jenny, if you are in Malaysia, did you see anywhere like close from your address uh, the fountain of youth? <laughs> and you ask me how I stay young? I mean, we have a secret, brother. Then, then so guys, after this fish, she entered the sea. When Moses wake up, like, where is the fish? He said, I want to eat. Like, Musa want to eat the fish, which Allah, he told him when this fish, how you want to eat the fish if Allah, he told you, this is the fish will lead you to Khadr. Like, look at this crazy story. Allah told Musa that when you lose this fish, you will find Al-Khadr. So why Musa is asking the guy to cook the fish for him? Is it Allah, he told you? Wait until the fish escape, and now Musa is going to eat the fish. <laughs> hey, my friend from India, how are you? Say hello to Moody. <sighs> so imagine Allah, he gave me a GBS, because this is the GBS at that time of, of Musa's. And then Musa is going to eat the GBS. I mean, do you see how strong this story is? Because how Musa will find Al Khadr by this fish, and now Musa is want to eat the fish. Like what? So when Musa woke up, he asked his attendant, "Bring early meal." You know. Oh boy. I know, I find Islam very convincing. I know how many of you were convinced to Islam. I, I mean, to convert to Islam after you. Now, here, what happened after that, they found that the fish escaped. His attendant, his name is Yeshua Ibn Nun. And by the way, we have a Muslim. Okay. Hello? Yes, go ahead, my friend. You are live on air. You are speaking to Christian Prince, but you are not loud enough. Speak louder, please. So, you are talking about the um, else speaking or something else. So, are you the right person to say that? Um, in, in Revelation chapter 14, verse 4 to 5, it says that I am only virgin and go to heaven in your Bible. So, you are now here saying... You know, what, 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 what it says, what it says, what it says, I don't understand. Uh, so, slowly, please. Okay, okay. 
Go to Revelation chapter 14, verse 4 to 2. It mm. says that only virgin men goes to Jesus Christ heaven, which you know. Are you a Christian scholar? Because um, I, I check out your um, debate. You were saying um, Jesus Christ mentioned I am God in um, John John chapter 8, verse 12. That's a lie. Why, why, why do you keep lying to all these people? I don't understand the word of what he's saying. Anyone can translate for me? I don't, don't understand what I don't understand. No. Can yeah. you can you okay, can you do this? Can you type the question for me and you call me back so I can read it? Okay, no problem. All right. Type no the problem. question, type the question, send it to me as text and call me after, you know? Give me a second just to okay. read it so I can understand you. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Anyone understand what you are saying? <coughs> no, no. He was saying Revelation what? Revelation 14? Fourteen? And I don't know what verse he was saying. I think it was 40 something. I don't know, but there's no 40 something in chapter 14. I'm not sure what he was saying. Yeah, Revelation 14, but what, what, uh, what after that he said? Anyway, we will wait for him to type the question so we can, we can see what he want to say. <clears throat> Do we have another Muslim want to say anything? See how easy it is to call me Muslims? Very easy. Your scholars don't dare to open their microphone for people to call. They don't dare. Anyone? I think he is saying that in the book of Revelation, is speaking about something similar. This is not true because a book of Revelation is a metaphorical about what will happen. It's not about there is a there is a goat or there is a sheep or th this is not this is not what really it is. This is a vision. I saw. This is a vision. But this is not really what it's meant. So if you are thinking, well, here we are talking about something really, Muhammad, he claimed that this is for real what's happening. The book of Revelation, nobody will really know uh, what it's meant by, like literally, until it happened. This is why it's called the book of Revelation, because this is a, a prophecy for the future. So when those things happen, then we will recognize what this book is talking about. Otherwise, it's a metaphorical for things as a vision. This is not about, like, uh, uh, you see, everything you read there is in connection with the Old Testament. And it's a very highly metaphorical. This is not about a beast. This is not about a horn. Hello? Hello? Yes, did you send me, you did you send me the, que the question, my friend? Have you seen my question? I did not see your question. Hold on. Where is, where is your question? Okay, so you were saying in your last video, I don't know, maybe your last video, that Jesus said he was God. So he brought out in John chapter 8, verse 12, which is a lie, which you are a liar, which you know that you're a liar. What? So, lying line about what? Hold on. Hold on. Lying about what? Lying about what? Lying about what? Are you swear with Jesus? What? what? Swear with your Jesus. What, what, what are you talking about? A line about what? Like you said last podcast I was lying. About what? Hello, I can't hear you. I'm saying you said I was lying. Lying about what? Lying about what? Lying about Jesus Christ calling himself God. How where I was lying? Yeah, okay, go, go, go to the chapter now. Go to the chapter. Go to the Hebrew verse, um, translation of the chapter. All Copy right. and paste it down. Put it in Google and let everybody see it. John chapter. All right. I will, I will, okay, I will put it in the front so, of everybody in the screen. Hold on, hold on. Let me put it in the okay. screen. Okay. Is everybody, everybody 
everybody listening to me, go and check um, King James Version of that chapter. See if God may... Um, okay, you see, you see, you see, okay. Go and check. Hey, hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, listen. When Jesus he says something, what if he's if Jesus says I am right? I am. Okay. He said I am the light. Then, no, I am okay. The, no, I am. Uh, okay. When God he spoke to Moses, what he said to him? What he says to him? Um, tell me what he says to him. I'm asking you. You're the one who knows. No, I'm, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. I am. No, I, I'm asking no, you. What, what Jesus said. What Jesus said is it is exactly the same as Jesus as God he says to Moses. Exactly as what um, God says to Moses, and the light, the truth, and the way. Okay, when doing uh, Moses, time was uh, Moses not the light, the truth, and the way. So all these entities you are talking about. No, no, no I'm asking you. Don't, don't uh, change topic. What, what God He says? What, what? Listen, listen. Listen, listen. What God He said? What, what God said to Moses? What? Well, tell me what God says to Moses. Well, He said to him, "I am the living God," and this is what Jesus said. If this is what you just said, like, hey, everybody, everybody, I hope you can listen to me. Hey, everybody, hey, everybody can go because this is what I am mean, my friend. When you see some translation, they say some. Uh, listen, we cannot talk in the same time. Some translation they say okay. it says that Jesus he said I am right. So I am. He is saying what God he said to Moses. I am the Lord. I am the living God. So you are saying you like a translation of 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 uh, King James? Do you like the translation of James uh, King James? Or is that a translation you approve? I'm asking you. No, no, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. So if I show you from the translation of, of uh, okay, hold on, hold on. So if we go to uh, King James, we cannot talk at the same time. I have to hang up on you. We cannot talk at the same time. You have to respect yourself. You ask me a question. You know this. This is the problem with those from Nigeria. They cannot. They cannot let you talk. This is what I you know, like experience. Always they call you, they ask you the question, and they are the one who will answer it. Are you going to let me talk? I to me now. Are you going to let me talk? Okay, okay, talk. I'm okay. Listening. First of all, here the translation is coming from the Aramaic Bible exactly, which means this is not Latin translation. This is the Aramaic itself. So in the Aramaic, which is the most, hold on, shut up. You, you promise me. You promise that you will let me talk. You ask me a question. Let okay. me ask. Let okay. let me answer you. Don't don't force me to hang up on you. I mean, what the point of this call? I will let you talk. Okay. You ask me a question. Let yeah. me answer you. Shut up. Let me talk. Let me talk. When I finish, okay, okay. I will say to you, the mic is yours. Yeah, okay, okay. No, 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 so, no, no. this is a translation of the Aramaic Bible. This is why it's called Aramaic Bible in plain English. So, the Aramaic Bible, this is what Jesus, he was speaking, the language he was using. So, he said, I am the living God. And the verse is in the front of you. Same time, in the book of John, from the beginning of John to the end of John, speaking about Jesus, he is the living God. As long as you like the book of John, in in the in, in King James, do you approve uh, King James? The, the mic is yours. Do you approve it? Okay, can, I, can I talk now? Can I talk now? I'm asking you. Do you approve King James translation? Okay. Should I talk? Should I make my point, please? Yeah, I'm asking you. I'm, it's still time to talk. Do you okay, okay, do so you so approve? Do you let, do you let, approve? Let do you approve? No, no. Okay. This is the question. This is the question. Don't change this kind of um, big entity of Christian world. Why why will they omit it? Why will they um, revise? Those are translation. Those are translation. Those are shut up, shut up. Those are translation. The original is the Aramaic or the Greek or the Hebrew. The rest is translation. The same as I say to you. Listen. Those are translation. Do you yourself? What is it? What is the translation you accept for the Quran yourself? For myself, okay. You know, Bible has different. I'm asking you, please. Different. What the translation well, you accept for the Quran? What translation, what translation? What translation? Let's listen. I want an answer. What translation you consider the correct translation for the Quran so we can call it Quran? For Quran, Quran. Do you mean Quran? No, no. Which one? Which one? Which is the translation you accept to be the Quran? I'm asking. Don't change topic. I'm asking you. Which translation you accept to be the Quran? Choose any. I give. I give you the choice to choose any. 
I'm not changing the topic. Yeah, you won't change the topic here. I'm asking you which one you accept. Give me the name of the translation you accept to be the Quran, the correct Quran. Which one? I Anyone wants. I'm upset. Anyone. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Okay. If we go in the Quran right now, in chapter 19, verse number 19, in the translation of Yusuf Ali, it says that Jesus is holy God. Does it say that Jesus? Does it say that Jesus? Hold on. Listen. Does it say? Does it? Here we go. Here we go. Don't turn off your camera. I don't like to see people in the camera. I'm asking you now. Does it say in Yusuf Ali that Jesus is holy? Chapter 19, verse number 19, and this is your Quran translation. Huh? He's holy, of course. Isa, 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 Abdul Miriam is holy. No, okay. Jesus Christ. Jesus how, Christ. How, he, how, he is, how he is holy? I'm asking you the question. If there is any man is holy in this world? Did I tell you I'm his holy? I'm asking you, if there is any man in this world is holy, isn't it your prophet? He says, Adam Every son of an Adam is a sinner. Okay. Okay. I tell you why he's holy? And the meaning of him, God bless him with a pure spirit. This is not. This is not the question. This is not the question. Listen, people from Nigeria. It's, I, I don't know what you are eating, but you have a problem. I'm asking you. Can Jesus be holy? Yes. Yes. Of course. Okay. Is. If there is anyone besides Jesus is holy. If there is any. Okay. Listen. If there is anyone, uh, shut up. If there is anyone besides Jesus is holy in Islam. Yes, yes, a lot. All the prophets are holy. That's a lie. Here we go. The Quran says that your prophet is a big fat sinner. Do you want me to show you the Quran? Here we go. Hold on. Shut up. Shut up. Let me hang up on you because you, are, you talk too much. He said the F4 at the end. This is your prophet. The Quran says that Muhammad is a big time sinner. To the point Allah, he said to him, I will forgive your past and your sin to come. Don't speak over me when I'm talking. No, I'm asking you. You said, you said, Abdul. You said, you said, you said, you said, you said that you said that Muhammad. You said that Muhammad is holy. Chapter one, verse nineteen. Hello. Are you going to answer? You said that Muhammad is holy. Why you are lying? You said, you said, is the prophet. He mentioned him. They asked John. Was he Christ? He said no. Was he Elijah? I said no. Then I asked him again. I don't know. Who, who, who is the, I did the, Shut up. I don't understand you. Actually, I don't even understand the word from what you're saying. Stupid idiot. In the Quran, there's no single person is holy save Jesus. And this is how it jumped from topic to topic. And he is the one who will choose for us what translation is good for us. He is upset because we are showing from the Aramaic that Jesus says, I am the living God. Well, here we go. This is the Quran, chapter 48, verse number 2. It says, May Allah forgive thee sin, the one in the past and the one to come. So why you lie to us and you say there is someone beside Jesus is holy? There is nobody in Islam beside Jesus is holy. The only holy person is Jesus. Who is beside Jesus in Islam is in heaven right now. Nobody beside Jesus in heaven. Who is beside Jesus in Islam is called the Spirit of Allah. Nobody beside Jesus in Islam called the Spirit of Allah. Who is beside Jesus called the Word of Allah? No one beside Jesus called the Word of Allah. Actually, it's a title for him. Who is the one who will come in the judgment day with Jesus? Nobody will come in the judgment save Jesus, Jesus himself. And then you say to me, Jesus is not God. So look at this uh, fallacy of the Muslims. Jesus, he can resurrect people from death. Jesus, he can tell you what you had in your houses. Jesus can, uh, by touching him, you, he, can, he can make you healed. He can make the blind see. He can create from the mud the bird. He can make a living creature. He breathed into it and became alive. All of this does not make Jesus God. So what made God God then? And as you see the Quran confirm, and this is the lies the Muslim already spread, that Muhammad was a holy man. Muhammad in his time, he could not deny that he is a scam. So he made this verse actually to clean himself. So he said, Allah, Allah will forgive my past and my coming sin. So Muhammad is admitting that in the past he was a sinner, in the future he is a sinner. Nothing changed. So he was a fraud in the past, he is a fraud in the future. 
And look what the verse here is saying, which is very funny. It says, may Allah forgive thee. Obviously, the one who made the, the verse, Muhammad, he forgot to switch from Allah speaking to him speaking. Because if Allah is speaking, he should not say that, may Allah forgive thee. Correct, guys? If Allah is talking, Allah should not say, may Allah. If Allah is talking, what do you mean, may Allah forgive ye? Allah is asking who to forgive Muhammad? If the one is talking, is Allah. How Allah he say, may Allah forgive thee. I mean, how stupid that, 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 that Quran is. Obviously, there's somebody, he's, he made this verse. This is not, he cannot be Allah. If Allah is God, he will say, I forgive you, not me. And he will not say, may Allah, he is Allah. So look at the lies they say to us. This is chapter 48, verse number 2. Please take a note. And this is the link. I will post it for you. And this is the Muslim translation. They lie to us. They say all the prophets are holy. Isn't it Muhammad? He said that Adam, uh, Abraham was a liar and he lied in three things. You're a liar. Isn't it Adam was kicked out of heaven? Isn't it Moses? He killed a man. And this is all in your book. All of them, they commit sin. Save Jesus. No exception. I like, you know, I like, I like, uh, you know, there's many people from Nigeria when they call you, but Nigerian Muslims, they have a, something weird. They don't let you talk. And the second you ask them a question, they skip it and they go back to zero. First of all, when you debate somebody, you debate him about his belief, not your belief. Which means, if you want to debate the Christians, you know that the Christian believe that Jesus is God. Secondly, when the Christian they show them what show you what it's in their book, you don't tell them this is a wrong translation. You don't even speak the language. You don't speak even the Quran language. So you are ignorant in every way, and yet you want to teach us what is right, what's wrong. When I show Muslims something, I show them what they wrote, not me. I don't teach them my belief when I speak about Islam. I teach them what they believe, and this is embarrassing. We show them what they believe, they get upset. If we show this guy now, guys, who remember how Allah, he got the cat in the ship of Noah? Anyone remember? How Allah, he got the, sh the cat in the ship of Noah? Allah, he inspired Noah to hit the lion between his eyes. Gee and then the, the the lion sneezed and the cat came out and the purpose of that so can she can chase the mice in the ship so the mice will not eat the wood of the ship and they will be drawn how allah he created the pig and why allah inspired noah sorry not noah, uh, yeah, noah he inspired noah to hit the elephant in his anus with a stick and then the elephant he poop pigs and what the purpose of creating the pigs according to Allah after he inspired Noah? Because he wanted the pigs to eat the poo-poo because it became too much poo-poo in the, in the ship. So they want somebody to eat the poo-poo. I mean, look how stupid this mad this cult, man. I mean, can't they throw the, the poo-poo in the water? What's wrong with this religion? I mean, the one who made those stories, not only he don't have a brain, he have, I mean, if you have too much poop, can't you throw it in the ocean? You, 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 you are in the middle of nowhere in the ocean. Why you need a pig to eat the poop? Okay, when the pig eat the poop, where is the poop of the pig will go? I mean, stupid religion. Somebody believe in this cult, he called me to teach me. I mean, you believe in the most crazy stuff. So when you quote for me the book of Revelation, book of Revelation, all of it, it's metaphorical. All of it. I saw, I saw, it's a vision. Go and read, learn how to read. Sure, please, just watch the video pre previously. We have a video just a few days ago. It's called How Allah, He Got the Cat uh, 
in the ship of Noah, something like that. Do we have any Muslim want to call me? And always the Muslim, they call me and they open the camera for me. I don't know why. <clears throat> any, any Muhammadan? So, did Jesus say I am God? Yes, he did. And the whole Bible says that. It doesn't matter what translation you read, actually. And if you read it from the first book of the book of John, in the King of James translation, if, you, if, you, if this is what you like, you will see it says the beginning, it, in the beginning it was the Word, and the Word is the God. That is the Word. And who is that Word? Is Jesus. Verse number 14. Any translation you want. Right? <clears throat> Uh, no, Mr. Truth Seeker, all the Christians, it doesn't matter what demonation they believe in, all of them, they believe that Jesus is God and they understand those very well. That is your false fiction speak, uh, words. Orthodox, Ethiopian, uh, uh, Coptic, uh, uh, Protestant, Catholic, all of them, they agree that Jesus is God. And that's what makes us a Christians, because if you don't, then you are no Christian. You are something else. And just to show you how stupid what you just said, obviously you do not know your Quran because your Quran is saying that the Christian, all of them, they have one belief. What is that belief? That the Messiah is Allah according to, Islam, to Muhammad. All the Christian, they believe in that. So how come you, you know more than your Allah? Why Allah is a stupid? You do not know what you know. Look like you know more than Allah. Indeed, they disbelieve the one who say that Allah is the Messiah. Do you see it? Who are they? The people of the book. The Christians specifically. So your God did not say the Christian they have different understanding from each other. No. Your God, he called all the Christians Nasara. And this is a stupid of him, by the way. Because there is no Christian is Nasara. Now, do we have any Muslim, any Muhammadan would like to call us? May they, may they? Hmm? And look how Allah, he say, he want to refute the Christian. He said, if Allah want, he can destroy Mary and Jesus. Okay, destroy them. Let us see. Destroy them. Destroy Jesus. Go. Talk is cheap. Destroy me. In maybe in 10 years from now, or 30 or 40, or maybe tomorrow, Christian Prince he died, and then you see Allah he killed him. <laughs> Any Muhammadan? Just to show you that Allah is a God of this ability. Are you sure? The Ibunit are not a Christian, you idiot. What Ibunit? Ibunit is not a Christian. You are stupid. You see, this is what you st st stupid about you. Okay, you see, I'm going to show everybody the stupidity of Muhammad by the help of the Muslim, of the Muhammadan. Look at this. Look at this. Look how Muslim they help us to get Muhammad busted and spank him hard. Are you sure? Prove it. To use Ibunit's belief, Jesus is God. Show me. The Arians believe that Jesus equal to God. I'm waiting. Okay, if this is what you are saying, why Allah he do not know about the Ibunet? And why Allah he don't believe, he don't know about the Arians and he call all the Christians Nasara? I will tell you why. Because your God is a stupid. And you get more education than your God Allah. Are you guys getting the point? Because as long as many groups Allah is talking about us as one group. Why? <laughs> Are we getting the point, guys? 
how Allah consider us one group if we are not so what you are saying that your God is a stupid he is a certified donkey he do not know Christians are not one group and this is what you are saying to me thank you very much I agree your God is a stupid he do not know and you know better secondly any any group who don't believe in the Trinity, any group who don't believe in the Father, the Son, any group who don't believe that Jesus is Son of God, any group who do not believe that Jesus is by Him and for Him everything is created, is no Christian. They can call Him, this is why they call them different names. And this is why the Christian rejected them. As simple as that. Any Muhammadan? You see, the Muhammadan, they get upset when you read for them the stupidity of their book. And just to show you the stupidity of the God of Islam, Aka Muhammad, look at this. The Jews, they say, and the Christian, they say, we are the sons of Allah. Say, <laughs> then why Allah, he, he punish you for your sin? Hello? Here you see the stupidity of the author of the Quran. He do not understand what the children of God mean. He think we are physically, we are his children. Correct? So Muhammad, each time he talk about Christianity or about Judaism, he get himself busted because obviously he don't understand what the Christians believe. He do not understand what the Jewish believe. And the second he talk, he make a mockery of himself. Okay, show me all the Christians are the same. You are stupid. Isn't it the Quran says that we are Nasara? Why he is giving us one name then if we are not one? Give me another name the Quran gave to the Christians. Here we go. I'm waiting for your answer. Is our name in the Quran only Nasara? How we can be all of us Nasara if we are different? Because different belief will make us different, uh, different uh, religion at least. <laughs> So when your God Allah call us Nasara, that means we are one group. Look here. Okay, do you see the verse that says the Jews and the Christians? The Jews and the Christians. Did he say some of the Christians? Did he say there's a Christians and did, did he use an No. There's either Jews or Christians. There's no th a third party. So as long as you are saying there is many kind of a Christians, that means your God Allah is a stupid because he called all of them Christians. Thank you for helping us. And you know, uh, one more funny thing, you will see the verse after it, Allah, he says, people of the book, I mean, look how stupid this God is. If, if our book is corrupt, how do you call us people of the book? Again, the one who wrote the Quran, he admitted that we are the one who have a book of God. They don't. You see, when you say the people of the book, that's an honor. That is an honor. That is not just like a little, little thing. This is a big honor. We are people of the scriptures. You are people of what? Of camel urine. This is the truth, my friend. We are people of honor. We are people of the scriptures. And you are people of camel urine. Prove me wrong. And if we have a book which is not a true, then why the Quran call us people of the scriptures? That will be stupid of Allah. Because the one who carry a false book, he cannot be called the people of the book. Garbage in, garbage out. Muhammad is talking, what do you expect? When Muhammad, he talk, there's nothing but poo, poo You can use it as a fertilizer, yes, but not as a scripture. Hmm? Anyone? 
All right, guys, I have some work to do. As you know, I have four wives and four mother-in-law, and we have 70 kids. And alhamdulillah, uh, brother, I have to go and pray now. This is what the Muslim hypocrite they do. You see this guy, he's going live in his uh, computer. Uh, brother, I have to go and pray. He have to tell everybody he have to go to pray because he's a decent person. He's a very decent person. I mean, I have to go and pray. Eh? I have to announce it in CNN, Fox News, because I'm a good guy. I have to pray. And then if I want to pray, I open the windows. I remember when I was a kid visiting a Muslim, uh, a kid in my age, in the school, he was in the school. It's cold, it's winter time, and the, the father, when he want to pray, he opened all the windows. He had like a big balcony. They are rich people. They open all the windows. He left all the blinds because he want to pray, because he want all the neighbors to see him. I said to him, why your father opened the window? It's cold. He said, he do that always when he pray. Always when he pray. This is why you see them in the corners. And this is what Jesus said. Be aware. Don't be the same as those hypocrites who play in the, pray in the corners. Hypocrites. This is the cult of hypocrisy and madness. Where there's God who promised you women, their bum is one mile. I don't like a woman with one mile. I like it half mile. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid God? He makes such a promise. A woman, she have one mile bum. Where I'm going to find her an underwear. And if she do poo, poo what I will do with it? And what if she sit in the top of me to spoil me? Mm -hmm. Honey, what are you? I don't see you. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I don't see you. Are you there? Mm -hmm. One mile. I mean, your prophet is the uh, this guy. He is the best fairy tale story teller, and your private part is endless. So you are in New York, but your private part is in China, and you receive a phone call. Ching pong, hee ho, hey. Uh, this is a Brosley. He was calling you, sir. Translation to move your penis from in the front of the tram because you are blocking the highway in China. Endless penis. This is God and this is religion. And you are debating me about Jesus. I mean, look what you have. Please look at yourself in the mirror before you speak about Christianity. Look at the madness you have. What is this? So beautiful. So yummy. <laughs> Look who's talking. Uh, yeah, well, I am the one who said that you are copying me. Garbage in, garbage out, my friend. And this is what your prophet, he do. He made you eat garbage. Isn't it urine is a garbage? And look, you did not, you did not dare to answer about anything I said. Why well, you don't call me truth seeker and tell people about the big ass Allah will give you? Explain to us why the size is so big. Are you going to do hiking in the top of it? The brother and sisters, brother truth seeker is inviting you for hiking in the top of his wife's ass. It's one mile, it's very smooth. It's very trendy. Anyone knows how smooth is the skin of Muslim women will be in heaven? Do you believe it that Allah, he will spend 1,000 years to smooth her skin? Why? I mean, you made her skin from alligator skin. Even if it's a concrete, there's a machine you can buy it from Home Depot. In two minutes, they can make any concrete smoother than a child face. 1,000 years. What, what is the power, power for God? This power for God, he cannot skin, he cannot smooth the skin by saying, be in it, you will be. He have to work in it 1,000 years every day in the morning. He woke up Allah and he start like doing, uh, what do you call it? When you smooth something, sanding, sanding, sanding. The woman, she will be like in a massage table and Allah is sanding her. 1,000 years will take Allah to smooth one woman. I mean, what, those women are scary. They must be like alligator or something. Your God, Allah, he never heard of a cream or Vaseline. 1,000 years. I mean, don't you think he's exaggerating? What about 999 years? What a stupid cult. 
anyway guys i'm happy to have you don't forget to download the video and uh, <clears throat> god is good god is good and many people by seeing our videos they will leave islam guarantee they cannot deny that nobody can stay in this cult everything we say we show it in the screen we show the reference we show the proof and we show even muslims translation for them and in the worst scenario we use google translation <laughs> and in the best scenario we make a muslim call us who speak arabic and we get him busted so i want to say thank you for being here and i hope to go live on air maybe later if i can but maybe not and, and if not maybe tomorrow so uh, please subscribe tell your friends about our uh, channel and we have more channels subscribe to them too and again uh, remember the truth will set you free and muhammad is nothing but a fraud nothing but a fraud the messiah said there is a golden way to know who is a fraud who is not from their fruits you shall know them they will deceive you they will say quran is a book of science quran is a book of garbage full of errors it's a book of error actually from the first page to the last page actually you know what in the coming session we go in life i will challenge any muslim to call me and choose a verse in the quran it can be true just one thing about science not a single thing it's a challenge this is the book of error and stupidity and I am not a fool and I will never be one if you have Instagram join us there if you have minds join us there and you can join us too in Patreon if you wish and we will see you again Christ is Lord Islam is false and we prove that every day thank you and God bless you take care